Scott, if you can come on up and uh, we're going to have the engineer 775 talk a little bit about energy. Then we're going to have a um, another short question and answer time. So uh, we'll bring Skinnymatic and uh, we'll bring East Coast Paper as well up here with you guys. No cat jokes. Pack, packing a cat for a bug out bag? <laughs> I didn't know where he was. I didn't know where he was going for that. But I know, I know I'm in trouble now. I would like to say, you know, I came here this morning and I wasn't prepped. I came here this morning and I tried to have my PowerPoint presentation loaded on the computer. It didn't work. And I was freaking out. I went through four computers before I could get that thing saved to an older version of. PowerPoint, because that's how far behind Don is. And, uh, <laughs> anyway, um, there are a couple of wonderful folks sitting in the corner they've already been mentioned from Vipersoft, Jim, Amy and his wife. Um, they're, uh, they're, they're looking for beta testers for their prepping software, global prepping software. So if you would, they, they're just looking for people that are willing to help them in developing that software. So if you would see them in the back corner, they'll tell you what they need from you and just to be able to help them develop that software. So again, thank you very much for saving me this morning. So I think it worked. Is it working? All right, we're on energy. Great. Um, I wanted to explain this to you. Um, and actually, Southern Prepper said he would shoot me if I went through this process. Um, anyway, I like I like uh, technology. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to go through that because I don't want to get shot. But I will say a little bit of electricity. We talk about energy. Talk about this as a broad subject. Um, electric. A little bit of electricity solves a whole lot of problems. I borrowed that from a fellow prepper that's here. And I also want to say a little bit of fuel goes a long way. It goes a long way. How long does it go? Let's just say, just bear with me on this. There's, we'll say there's 500 people that came to the conference, okay? And that you drove here at 50 miles an hour, and you, it took you, I know, it's, I'm just bear with me with the numbers. And it took you 30 minutes to get here, okay? Following me, and gasoline vehicle, and your, your vehicle gets 20 miles to the gallon. So 500 people, 50 miles an hour, you get 20 miles to the gallon, and, and then one man hour of energy is, one, one gallon of gas is equal to approximately 500 hours, man hours of labor. We take for granted how cheap fuel is. No, it's not that cheap anymore. $118 a barrel in London yesterday. But we take things for granted. So if you take all those numbers, multiply them out, the 500 people, 55, 50 miles an hour, 30 minutes to get here, one gallon of gas is 500 man hours, that's 325,000 man hours of labor that we all used to get here. That means it's going to require 300, if an EMP goes off right now, that means it's going to require 325,000 man hours of energy to push your cars home and trucks home. I just do that just kind of, there's a, we take for granted fuel. And so one of the things I'm going to talk about is energy, having some fuel around. We take for, it's, it's, you want to have some gas, you want to have some diesel, you want to have some um, varieties. Like I said, water, there's only one alternative. I mean, there's no alternative. The only alternative is to die. Um, but with fuel, when you, with fuel, there are many alternatives, and we're going to talk a little bit about, about those. So I promise I won't go into, uh, can you see that? Okay. And so, again, I'm going to talk about the sources, sources of fuel, and sources of energy, and then just give you some idea, ideas, maybe, it's like, I had no idea I had this fuel source next to my retreat, next to my home, and, and start, you know, working with that. And that's kind of what I've been doing the last 15 years, is coming up with different ways to, to power vehicles, to power my home, and just from what I have next to me, not going anywhere, not having to buy it. And so it's been a, a fun thing. Some of you have seen my truck outside, the gasification truck. That's just one example. You can check that out and talk about that, that later. There's, there's some neat things that have been lost. Now, that's technology from, from the late 1800s. All street lights were powered by uh, gasification. The gasification process that I run my truck with, run my generator with, it came from, you know, <laughs> late 1890. And then was used a lot in World War II. There were a million cars running off of wood during World War II in Europe. 
There was only six in the United States known to man at that time. But a million vehicles running. And I'm getting, I can talk about gasification all, all day, and I will do that too. I'm going to talk about some sources. The first um, source, well, I can't see it. I hope you can see it. Some of the sources that are available, these are um, with, with wind, solar, uh, HHO, I know some of you guys are playing around with that, gasoline, propane, natural gas. There are, uh, we have so many sources of energy. Uh, diesel, uh, wood of course, hydro, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into um, solar. But one of the first things you need to do first is how much energy do you need? You know, we're going to have to um, lower our expectations. Um, again, food and water first, and these other things, bug out bags. And this is kind of like, this is the... This is the icing on the cake for the prepper, is to have some energy. My, my wife and my children appreciate a hot shower. The guys, we might be able to go a lot longer, but uh, being able to, to spend time either securing our location, doing other things. If we can you know, run a generator for a couple hours a day and we've prepped for that, that's a, that's a, that's a great thing. You know, I, like, I love it when the power goes out. I'm kind of, it, I know I'm strange, but it forces, it, it really forces me to do it. You know, I say I can do this, but it really forces me to test my preparation. And so I like to live off the grid for three, four, five days at a time. And that's run everything. Run, just run the house the way it normally runs. It's taken a long time to get there, but it's just, can, if the power goes out and everybody's looking at me, you know, can I, can I do it? And I've got to that point, but again, it's taken a long time to get there. Um, what the, before I really get into something, I said, don't get ripped off by people selling you um, things that are, that are out there, like solar generators. There are people selling these things, like, and they're selling like mad, okay? Do your research, do your homework on these things, because they'll put them up against the gas generator. They're lying to you right then, okay? And they're getting $2,000 a pop for these things that won't make a cup of coffee. You know, it, you'll, you'll burn up the energy to make a cup of coffee in about six minutes in what that thing's capable of producing. And then if it's cloudy or rainy, you've got to wait another four days before you're up to you make another cup of coffee. Do not get ripped off buying those. Because the battery storage within them, are, they're, you can build a system a lot cheaper than that yourself. So let's uh, let's talk solar. I think, yeah, let's talk solar. Um, solar, like I said before, solar is fantastic for pumping water. Solar is fantastic for charging batteries. Uh, when it comes to photovoltaics and powering your home, um, there's some guys. Uh, there's like Outer Banks Solar and Wind. You got to go to that guy's channel. He's, it's amazing what he can do with. Um, but he's also got the resources too. Um, out, out there where he where he lives, and but solar, pumping water great, batteries great, and you know I started looking. I wanted I wanted to price a solar. I wanted to get off the grid. I wanted to use solar to do that a long time ago. I, I had companies come out and give me estimates. How can you do this? And here's some, here's my power bill. And I want what do I need to do? And if I did all the work on my house and I installed, poured all the concrete, put up the solar array, they would come hook up the inverters. And panels, and we were up to $150,000. Okay. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. There's no payback on this for you know. I have four kids, got to go to college. There's, this is not not an option. That forced me into looking at different different things, and I'll talk about gasification in, in a minute in a minute here. But um, there's only, like I said before, there's only one out of 63,000 customers in our local cooperative that's running a solar home off grid that I know of. And so you know, for for that amount of money, I was able to. For one hundred fifty thousand dollars, I could produce the same amount of power for around eight thousand dollars that a hundred and fifty thousand dollars system. And I'll share some of that with you too. But what do I have up here on this screen? This is basically what they're selling for two thousand dollars, and you can put it together yourself for a couple hundred dollars. Harbor Freight, I know Harbor Freight has has kits. There's there's other ways you can do it. Some of you have solar panels. But what we've asked in our retreat, we're trying to help as many families as possible. We have five or six families and working together, networking, and we kind of have an entrance fee, uh, and a price of admission. And there's certain things, your supply of food, um, certain amount of water, you know, ammunition, um, and whatever your skill is. But also, I've asked everyone to have one of these systems, have enough solar and battery and a charge controller and an inverter to run lights, appliances, Nothing that you have to hook into your house, because if you get into that, the, the Outback inverters, the Xantrex inverters, they're $3,000, $5,000, they're incredibly expensive. 
So if you, everyone can, everyone in here can do this. You buy a solar panel. Make sure you have a charge controller that keeps you from frying from frying your your batteries. And I'm, I'm greatly simplifying this, but um, and then an inverter. And the difference in the inverter there's basically two types of inverters: modified sine wave and pure sine wave inverters. Uh, pure sine wave inverters are the inverters that can handle cordless um, tool batteries better than the modified sign. So modified sign are a lot cheaper, but look careful what you're charging. Some of them will not, they'll, you'll, you'll burn up your equipment or they won't work unless it's a pure sine wave. You spend a little bit more on a pure sine wave. So we basically ask everybody get a 1500 watt system, 1500 watt inverter and a deep cycle battery and a solar panel to keep that up. And then if we need to, all six systems can be combined for more power. And, and so that's just something to, something to think of. These are great. I use this. I, I used solar yesterday to charge a battery for the winch that I used to pick up that boiler that's sitting outside the door. I use solar to charge my batteries. Just I get in the habit of using uh, a solar panel and a charge controller to keep my batteries main, maintained. And so it's important to learn a little bit about batteries. Just because it says deep cycle, that's not what it means. Okay? You don't deep cycle your batteries. Because you can, if it's a deep cycle, but you're killing your battery, okay? I think I had that up here. Uh, battery, bi batteries, um, die, batteries die a natural death. Mo most, yeah, what did I say? No battery dies a natural death, but most are murdered, okay? Because people don't understand how a battery works. You can't discharge and keep this. A car battery doing that will last you about a year. But if you take care of a battery, you can get a decent deep cycle battery, a Trojan T105 or a Trojan L16. They'll last for eight years, no problem. And most people don't realize a battery will last that long. But we use batteries to run appliances. I run my outside wood boiler off a battery inverter, run my dehydrator, I can run a refrigerator, maintain freezer. And just real simple. Again, these are not grid time systems I'm talking about. So if you go into solar, do your homework, make sure your wires are sized properly, that you size your batteries properly. That's an important thing uh, to do. Again, you, um, by wiring batteries in series, you increase your voltage, but you do not increase your capacity. By paralleling them, you increase your capacity, but not your voltage. There's some basic, there's a simple, there's some books out there, uh, Secrets of Lead Acid Batteries. Very simple, old book by Thomas Lindsay, and you can learn everything you want to know about a battery. But batteries are important for preppers, I think. Um, you know, electricity is important. A little bit, a little bit of electricity in Japan would have kept those. Well, a lot, but an electricity is you know, that reactor from melting down, you know, and down to the AAA batteries in your bug out bag for your flashlight. Are you able to keep those charged? Are you able to keep those going? So, um, I think we'll, Nick, so that's all I'm going to talk about on solar. There are experts out there that do solar and they do a great job on it. But in terms of making power to run your house, it's, it's overrated. Um, and it's, uh, if you have the money, do it. Because it's peace of mind. Uh, like my solar, I got a 240 watt solar panel that runs my pump. It has never missed a lick in seven years. It works great. But it's nothing when it comes to running appliances and starting up motors. It doesn't have that capacity. Next source of power um, HHO. Um, some of you guys have ventured into hydrogen. It's like, man, I want to run my car off of hydrogen. I want to run my tractor off of hydrogen. I want to run my generator off of hydrogen. Some of you have invested a lot of time and energy in this, and I'm just going to say, and I'm probably going to be shot by some of you, there's more, you have to put more energy into it typically than you're going to get out. But the one thing, and I was, you know, set straight on the one thing good about hydrogen is that, that if you run it in, with gasoline, it definitely increases the efficiency of the burn of, of your gasoline. But most modern vehicles, the timing, the oxygen, everything about that vehicle um, is, is not going to work with you you start working with hydrogen. Not only that, all those stainless steel plates that you put together to make your little bomb, um, after you guys make some blown roofs off of buildings, hey look, come over here and look at my gizmo. Boom! I mean, the hydrogen is dangerous. And the byproduct of making HHO is hexavalent chromium, as I was informed by a fellow prepper. Um, and, uh, and anyway, anything to deal with that, you're going to get sick. Um, it's a, just a toxic thing. So that's all I'm going to say in HHO. Next source we can talk about, let's talk about propane. Great fuel source. Stores forever. Pretty much indefinite storage. The problem would be if you, you're going to run out, you're not going to be able to get it. That's the only problem. It's expensive, but it is a very good fuel source. Very efficient, but when it runs out, you're out. 
And so 